Welcome to Developing Graphics Frameworks with Python and OpenGL, Part 11, Uniform Data and the Uniform Class. There are many scenarios in computer graphics where you're going to want to use the same values in your shaders. For example, you might want to color all the pixels the same color for a geometric shape but without hard coding the value of the color in the shader, so you can change it at a later time. However, it would be really inefficient to use the approach from the last video. In the last video, you used a vertex buffer to store vertex colors, but it kind of doesn't feel right to create an array which is just filled with the same value again and again and again. So there's an alternative approach using something called a uniform variable. They're also useful in vertex shaders. For example, you might want to apply the same transformation to all the vertices that define your geometric shape. And uniform variables are good for all these tasks and more. Just like attribute variables being defined in the vertex shader with a type qualifier in, to create a uniform variable, you use the type qualifier uniform. And they can be used to send a constant value to all the vertices in the vertex shader or all the fragments processed by the fragment shader. And the two main use cases we're going to see are applying the same transformation to all the vertices, so you could shift something to a different position, or applying the same color to all the fragments, all the pixels that make up a shape. And uniform values can be changed between draw calls. They can't be changed within a draw call, but after you create an image, after you render an image with the GL draw arrays function, you could change the uniform value, then render again, and cause it to become animated. Or we could add some user interactivity to cause the changes in the program in response to user input. So uniform variables are useful for a lot of things. There's two main functions we're going to need from OpenGL to work with uniforms. Similar to attributes, we refer to uniform variables in code by some kind of a reference value, and we retrieve that reference value with the function gl get uniform location. As with attributes, we need to give it a program reference and a string which contains the name of the variable. That will return a reference to the variable for us, but if there's no such variable, or if there's a spelling error, or if the variable just isn't used in the code, this could return a value of negative one. Now, somewhat unlike the case with attributes, uh, with attributes, we had the function gl vertex attrib pointer and within that function, there were parameters which would specify the type of data, whether it's a float or an int, and it would specify the number of components. So for example, a vec2 or a vec3 or a vec4. Uh, those were parameters when we worked with the OpenGL functions for attributes. Uniforms are handled a little bit differently. Instead, there's different functions which can upload different sets of data to the GPU. They all begin with GL uniform, and this notation here with the brackets and the bars representing the OR symbol means that in the function name we choose one of these numbers, one, two, three, or four, followed by one of these letters, F for float or I for integer. Uh, the number refers to the number of values that will be sent, so the number of parameters we'll see here, and the letter refers to the data type. And this is used to upload a value to a uniform variable in a shader program. So in reality, this notation represents eight different possible functions. So for example, gl uniform one i, that would be the function for uploading one integer. Or gl uniform three f, that would be a function for uploading three floating point numbers. And these are the functions that we're going to need. Uh, there's also booleans, by the way. I didn't include this here. Booleans are just treated like a single integer, either one or zero. All right, 
With this theory in hand, we're ready to go ahead and create a uniform class, once again, uh, kind of in parallel with the attribute class. The uniform class will contain these OpenGL functions and kind of automate this process for us. So I'm going to head over to Sublime Text, my development environment of choice, and we're going to go ahead and create a uniform class. Now to do so, this is going to be some reused code, so I want to put this in the core folder. I'm going to right click and make a new file in the core folder and immediately save it with the name uniform.py. All right, and for this, really the only import we need, we need those functions from OpenGL. So we'll start off with from OpenGL.gl, we'll import all the things. All right, let's define the class. The class is named Uniform, extension of a basic object. As always, we need the constructor, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. And just like with attributes, uh, we'll take in two parameters. We need to know what type the data is, which will help us select the correct OpenGL function to upload it. And we need the data itself. All right, so first uh, we'll specify the type of data. And for now, uh, we'll extend this class more later on, but for now we'll take an int or a bool, a boolean, a single float, a vec2, a vector of two floats, a vec3 or a vec4. All right, and I'd like to start off by saving the values passed in the constructor in class variables. So I'll first start off with self.data type equals data type. And then uh, the data to be sent to the uniform variable. I will say that self.data will be equal to data. And for convenience also we'll store here a reference uh, for the variable location in the program. So we're going to be uploading this value again and again, right, right before every draw call. So it'll be useful to store this reference. So we only have to look it up once. Uh, Self.variableRef. Uh, it'll start off at none until we actually run a function to locate that reference for us. All right, next we're going to go ahead and, and define a function to locate the variable in the program using that first OpenGL function we talked about, GL get uniform location. Uh, and this will be to get and store a reference to a uniform variable. All right, let's call it locate variable. And uh, this is a self method. We need to pass in a program reference and a variable name as a string. And basically we're just setting the value of this thing we defined in the constructor uh, self.variableRef equals gl get uniform location. Again we just need to give it those two parameters the program ref and the variable name. All right. So that's the first OpenGL function taken care of. Now we know kind of where to send this data. Next, we need a function to actually upload the data. Again, this function will likely be called quite often. All right, so one more function. Uh, this function is going to be def. Uh, well, first, let's put in a comment. Uh, this function will store the data in the uniform variable. Let's call it upload data. And I like to draw parallels with the attribute class. We have a similar function there. All right, first, uh, we'll make sure that that variable actually exists. So if the variable does not exist, then we'll exit. We won't try to send data if it's not really there. So if self dot variable ref is negative one, then we'll just go ahead and return. That should be a colon. 
Excellent. And now we'll just have a big if else if block to cover all the different possibilities. Right? In this case, uh, we're just going to deal with the data types we listed in the beginning of the class. So we won't worry about things like integer vectors in this case, but we'll cover all the other types. So for example, if self dot data type uh, equals equals int, in that case, the function we would need would be gl uniform one i for sending one integer. We have to tell it uh, what variable reference it's getting sent to and the actual data that's getting sent. Um, else, if the data type is a Boolean, turns out it's handled by exactly the same function. And Booleans can be represented as a 1 or a 0, or a true and a false, and I think PyOpenGL would convert that to a 1 or 0. All right, next is the floating point cases. So let's do else if the data type is a float, one float number. So we'll use the OpenGL function GL uniform one F. I feel like I should just copy paste this little bit because we're going to keep writing that a lot. In fact, why don't I just copy paste this entire thing three times? Because we're just going to make slight variations on this. And so if the data type is a vec2, we use gl uniform 2f. If the data type is a vec3, we'll use the function gl uniform 3f. And if the data type is a vec4, then we'll use gl uniform 4f. Okay. And so that'll take care of all the different types of data that we'd like to upload. And probably we should add an else clause just in case. And in that case, we would raise an exception. We can say an unknown uniform type or data type. And we'll just go ahead and print that to the screen. And this would be self.data type. And that way, if there's some kind of a typo, we'll be able to identify it more easily. And because just because uh, the variable reference is negative one, that doesn't automatically trigger any warnings for us. So, uh, excellent. This is the framework we need. The next step is to actually use this class in production, right? And in the next video, we're going to set up an application which actually creates some uniform values and it shows how to, you know, for instance, translate a shape or create a shape with a different color. But we'll save that for the next video. All right, thanks for watching.